Welcome back, folks, to Scripting for Linguists. In this episode, I have this question for us. In Julia, which is faster to search through? A vector of strings or a matrix of characters? The reason I ask this is because in December of 2024, right, I did the, uh, the Advent of Code challenge at the adventofcode.com. And day four of that challenge was a linguistically oriented one of sorts. It was a word search trying to find all occurrences of Xmas, X-M-A-S, in a big grid of characters, those four characters. And the grid that each person received was 140 characters by 140 characters, this matrix here. And you're supposed to find all occurrences of Xmas in whatever direction Xmas can go, right? In, in a word search, you can go left, right, up, down, diagonal left, up, you know, diagonal right down, et cetera, et cetera. So there's eight different directions you could go to find all occurrences of Xmas. And I created a previous video. In a previous video, I showed that uh, Python was quicker than Julia and Mojo. I wrote, I saw this um, challenge in Python and Julia and Mojo and found that Python was quicker. But then I started receiving feedback on my Julia script and I appreciate all the feedback I received. First, Schmidt I out mentioned that Julia should perform much better if you don't use the try catch, because I used a try catch in my Julia code, just kind of basing it off of my Python code, in which I use a try accept. In Python, there was no difference. In fact, it was slightly slower to use an if else approach rather than the try accept in Python, three milliseconds slower. Um, so I created a follow-up video based on this comment from Schmidai out. Um, I'll link to that video as well as the original video, in which I show that it was 15 times faster for my Python for my Julia script to use if else rather than try catch. So lesson number one: don't use try catch in Julia if you don't have to. Use if else, an if else approach. And then um, I got a comment from Dustin Hess 6798, uh, who mentioned that Julia is a column major language. And I had heard that. I'm not a trained computer scientist, right? I'm a linguist who uses computer scripting for linguistic analysis. I had heard that idea, but I really wasn't sure about it. So I learned a little bit more about that. And um, there is a discussion here on Julia's question and answer form about this several years back. And um, Stephen G.J. says that it's based on historical precedent, given that Fortran was column major and therefore MATLAB is column major now and, and uh, most linear algebra libraries like LAPAC are column major. So Julia is column major. I didn't really know what that meant, um, but I guess it meant that I needed to like iterate over the columns as the innermost loop and then over the rows as the outer loop. That's what I assumed. Um, okay, so, and then after that, I um, got a comment from Andre Billier. Let me get up to his comment on the video. And he has, where are we? Here we are. He said, I have um, another great video. And he saw that because Julie came in last on, on uh, part one, he wanted to see if he can make it faster. He sure did make it a lot faster. And the core changes from my original version is that he's using a matrix of characters rather than a ve vector of strings. Well, there's the answer to the first question. I'm gonna show you how much faster it is. Then he's using the Cartesian indexes to navigate the matrix to make sure that Julie does it the right way, the fastest way, that is column major versus row major memory layout. Right, Julie is a column major, so that's what it'll do. Um, and then, anyway, he's limiting the uh, memory allocations in the loop that's called the most, the hot loop, right? and he's using static arrays. So he um, put his script up on GitHub, and so I'll link to his script. I asked him if that's all right, he said that's cool. So here is his, his script, this is Andre's script, that I'll link to uh, his uh, GitHub. There are the Cartesian indexes there. Again, these are eight, the eight directions you can go from a letter in a word search, right? Left, top left, bottom left, et cetera. Those eight directions, these are they in x, y coordinate right there. So negative one on the x-axis is going left. Positive one on the x-axis is going right. Uh, negative one on the x-axis is going left and positive one on the y-axis is going down. So 
left down, et cetera. And then here's this function count xmas, and it, it pulls in a character matrix and those eight directions we just saw above as Cartesian indexes. And he's using uh, a mutable vector there from the static arrays module and a static vector there. It's pretty cool. This is a very cool and um, what elegant solution to that uh, day four advent of code problem using Julia. He's using the inbounds macro there to make sure that Julia doesn't take the time to check the, make sure that the uh, it's inbounds. Um, and anyway, so here he's doing the if-else approach. He's not doing try-catch, he's doing the if-else right there. Um, excuse me. And here's a pretty cool approach to getting uh, a matrix of characters. He's using a pipe here. Take the file name, pipe it into read lines, and do a broadcast pipe into this anonymous function. We use reduce and do a horizontal concatenation to concatenate all the characters together into a matrix. Then he's using a vertical concatenation right there on line 43 to kind of squish that that matrix uh, that that vector of matrix matrices into a matrix of characters. And then he passes that character matrix into the function. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, the static arrays he uses here. This is um, a Julia module that says it provides fast implementations of common array and linear algebra operations. Cool. And so we're going to try it. I've already tried it, but we're going to look at it together. So let's just go back to start from square one for my original, very naive, <laughs> very unsophisticated approach to the, the problem of trying to find all Xmases in a big grid. And I won't rehash my whole script because I have a previous video, previous video on this. But just to show you, let's let Julia just run it right now. It shouldn't take more than about four or five seconds for it to run each of these. I'm going to have it first use my original approach, which is to use try catch and to loop over um, the elements in a vector. And then um, that's my outer loop. And then my inner loop is um, the strings, the, the characters in the string on the current element. So what do we see here in the bottom part of my screen? We see that we're hitting at about 144 milliseconds. Let me just take that number, 143.9 for three milliseconds to do, to find my, I think there's like 2,067 occurrences of Xmas in my grid. Um, so let's pull this number over into a spreadsheet right here. And I'm going to actually convert this into microseconds because we're gonna see very soon that we're gonna jump into microseconds, meaning um, we're going to get below a millisecond very soon. So, that we'll call that our base approach. My my baseline approach was my kind of naive approach. I used try catch. I used a row major approach, and then using Dustin Hess's um, comment, I kind of rewrote my script so that I would have my innermost loop be over the the y dimension. That is, um, loop over the characters, and then loop over the um, the elements in the vector. My kind of my naive approach to it. So let's take a look at that. And see how that does. Oh, let me point out, there are, real quick before we lose this, there are 235, almost 236,000 allocations in memory, over five megabytes there. And what do we see here? We're at 50, 154,573. Let me just write that down, 154,573 um, microseconds. So I'll just let me point out here on my spreadsheet right there. Let me zoom in quite a bit. My spreadsheet there, that kind of interesting looking U is a Greek letter called mu, and it's, um, it stands for microseconds, that is millionths of a second. So it's actually a little bit longer there, my kind of naive approach. And then using Schmidt-I's outs, Schmidt outs uh, comment about if versus um, try catch, I rewrote my script, and just as, again, this is a review from a previous um, video, but I just want to kind of lay the groundwork for what we're going to see with Andre's solution, which is smokingly fast. Um, we're down to, okay, we're down to seven milliseconds. Rather than 140, 150 something milliseconds, we're down to seven. So we have 7,809 microseconds. Let me just write that down. So that's how many microseconds we have. If we were to convert those milliseconds into microseconds. Okay, that is a big, a big speed up. Let's actually look at that. So here's our baseline. 
And if I take these, what do we see here? I have on this left column, I have uh, the percent of the baseline and then the speed up. So the my naive approach to try and do a column major versus row major thing didn't really do much in my script, probably because I'm doing it incorrectly. I know I'm probably not doing it correctly. Um, but using the if else rather than try catch that um, Schmidt out recommended, yeah, I get a big speed up, 18 times speed up just with that, just not using try catch in Julia. Again, so here's a big lesson. In Python, it's usually all right. I mean, there's some times when you shouldn't use a try except you should use if else, but by and large, unless you, you only need to worry about it if you're going to hit the accept branch a lot. But in Julia, you should really avoid try catch is what the take home message is from that. And then here comes in Andre's solution, which is really cool. So let's try his solution. Let's go back to our code. Go to Andre's uh, code here. I, I pulled his code into my um, editor here. I've done a little bit of, of finagling with it um, just to test some of the little parts of it. Um, but we're just going to run it. Let's just run it, let it go, hit it. Oh, by the way, I'll just show that. Yeah, there's still, still 234,000 allocations in memory. Here comes Andre's solution. There's only one allocation in memory. Whoa. And check that out. It is at 294, almost 295 microseconds. Whoa. Talk about quicker. In fact, we can look at exactly how much quicker that is by applying this little formula down. Okay. <laughs> Andre's solution is 488 times faster than my original naive solution uh, using a vector of strings and using try catch. Look at that number right there, 488 times quicker. Whoa, talk about fast. Let's actually try and make this a bit quicker. I, I discovered, um, like I mentioned, let me just show, Andre's solution used the M vector from the static arrays module. If I change that to a base vector, if I come over here, right here on line 18, he uses, he's using an M vector, which comes from the static arrays module. If I actually use a base Julia vector there on line 19 and rerun it, um, we'll see what happens. Okay, we're allocating two things into memory, but we actually drop the speed down even farther to 111. Whoa. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so... <laughs> Well, Andre's solution, which I modified a little bit, just one little modification there using a, a base array or using a, a base vector there rather than the M vector from the static arrays on that one little piece. We're now at 1,292 times quicker than my original solution. So, holy moly. Yeah, that is awesome. To go back to our, our original question, in Julia, which is faster to search through? A vector of strings or matrix of characters. Way faster to, to search through a matrix of characters. We're looking at you know 500 to 1,000 times faster. Jumping back over here, these two numbers right there. Yeah, it's way faster to search through a matrix of uh, characters rather than a vector of strings. So I very much appreciate Andre's feedback, uh, Dustin Hess's feedback, and Schmidt I Out's feedback. I love learning. As you know, I um, very much appreciate feedback from my viewers. I love learning. I'm a professor. I am in the learning industry, right? So please give me any feedback um, you may have. I am loving learning about Julia. Julia keeps uh, surprising me. I'm just very much impressed with Julia more and more, just how fast it can be. Um, again, you have to know what you're doing, which I appreciate the viewers saying, hey, do this rather than that. So there you have it. Uh, we are learning lots. I'm learning lots, and I appreciate the feedback. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you like or comment on the video, especially if you know how to make um, things quicker in Julia or Python or Mojo. I'm still waiting for Mojo to catch up with text processing with Python and Julia. Uh, Mojo hasn't yet been as fast as um, Julia and Python, at least base Mojo. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.